and you get the cost. And you get the cost, 10% of the cost, of the cost of your pizza. And so my son was very happy that, yes, we are leaving Jesus at exam. We are going to Pizza Hut and we're going to get the 10% and we're going to get a pizza. But then when we were, we, drive, we drove off, we, it was a sentence of prep at the time. When we drove off, um, he realized that he didn't have his timetable. Where was it? We could not find it. Where was it? So we are, we are halfway near to the restaurant and we could not find the timetable. Where was it? Couldn't find it. And then he remembered. Uh, this, I long to take this call? One minute. Uh, colleague, sorry, let me just put my phone on silent. A, it was a call from my son as I spoke about him, and I had to take that call. I'm sorry about that. All right, move on. So we're halfway now. You're still with me, everyone? Just making sure. Yes, you're here. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. So we are halfway now to Pizza Hut. So we are going towards Constant Spring. Pizza Hut is on Constant Spring Road. We are now just about done robbing. And we could not find the timetable. So my son determined that the timetable was left at school. St. Andrew Prepper. So we turned back. We went back down to St. Andrew Prepper to look for the timetable. Ah, the timetable, we went to the classroom, which could have been. But then by that time, the ladies had swept the classroom and cleaned up and packed away garbage. And they were almost off. This was like after four, going five o'clock. And my son started crying. Because here's a pizza, would not receive the pizza again because he needed the timetable to get the pizza. And let me tell you, another security guard at the school, along with one of the ancillary workers, set about helping us to find the timetable. And what did these ladies do, colleagues? What did they do? They opened every garbage bag. Every black garbage bag that was stacked at the school gate. The lady actually determined that this one was for grade six, like there's a 6B or 6, 6G or whatever. I think it's this one that I use to clean up 6G. Where's my son's classroom? And they opened the bag, bag after bag, to see, find an identifier to say the timetable could have been swept up in the garbage and in there. And after much search, it took us about 40 minutes to search garbage bag after garbage bag. And we opened them out. And they and I, they were in it. And we found the timetable crushed up, damp, dirty. Yes, literally crushed up, damp and dirty. Yes, yes. And we took out the timetable. My son's name on it, his exam number on it. And I pressed it out on the bonnet of the car and I say, this is it. And I thank the ladies, security lady, ancillary lady. And I helped them to pack back the garbage in the bag, tie back the, tie back the bags, wash my hand. And I went to Pizza Hut. When I got to Pizza Hut with the timetable, dirty timetable, I was I started explaining to the the server why the timetable was like this. No, oh. not be and she says, "Somebody, could you meet your mic, somebody? Could you mute your mic, somebody? Please? Somebody, could you mute your mic, please? Somebody, somebody, please mute your mic. Yes, the lady at Pizza Hut." looked at the paper and we explained to her. She said, it's okay. Can I see the name and the number? In fact, tell me the name. And she just looked at the time table, just glanced at it. And we got our pizza. Yes, 10% off. And my son ate 90% of it. <laughs> and he was happy. And I said, wow, what a contrast. The US embassy with somebody asking me for token in return for what I presume would have been heart given customer service to so two other ladies in another circumstance giving of themselves in the garbage to help 
this young boy at 11 or 10, he was 10, I think, to gain some happiness. And I said, wow. And that motivated me now. The following, it was, this was a Friday. The following week, I engaged my company and somebody else. And we prepared baskets of goodies for these two ladies, a security officer at the school gate and the uh, ancillary lady. And we gave them two huge baskets of goodies just to say thanks. Just to say thanks. So when I come to speak to you now this morning about managing teams for customer service success, my heart is full because I've seen excellent customer service. I've seen poor customer service. But then I will not start there. Can I I'm going to the big, the big job. I beg your pardon. Could somebody mute your mic, please? Could somebody mute your mic if you're not speaking to me or so? Right. So we're, we're going to we're going to speak about the customer service, and we're going to speak about the customer experience. But there is a starting point. I cannot begin a presentation or a lecture on achieving customer service success without starting with matters most. Well, let's, let's get going. So here's my title, here's my name. You all know my name, Patrick Sterling. Today is November 24th. And we have two parts of this presentation. I'm gonna use this first presentation to set the context. I'm gonna use the next um, presentation next week, is next week, I think, to explore the dimensions coming out of this context. So yes. Customer service, I'm going to put at the center of this the, the responsibility of us as leaders. So I, I gather we have managers on this platform. We have directors of organizations. We have leaders. We have people who um, make decisions. Am I correct, um, Madam Mon Mo Moderator? Decision makers here. Am I correct? Decision makers in my audience, managers, supervisors. Directors, am I correct? Just, just give me a quick summation here of the present of the participants. Yes, not, I'm not hearing so well. Not hearing. You all left. You're, you're all. You have all left me now. Not hearing. Doctor Sterling. Yes. One second, please. Um, the yeah. person with the A11 that is logged in, could you please identify yourself so we can mark the register, please? A um, who's A11? A, who is A11? <laughs> is, who is A11? We need, to, we need to mark you. We need to register you. Person who is at A11, A11. We are seeing A11, but not seeing a name or any other designation. Uh, we're not seeing, we're not seeing. But let's not. Uh, well, I don't know if we, should, we, could, we can detain ourselves, but we, time is against us. So I, think, I think, I think, um, Mm -hmm. Whoever is A11, we send them a message. We take yes. them off the call because we, if they can't identify themselves, then yes. they should well, be in our meeting. Yeah, well, we, we, best, best you do that. When we go to the airport and they say, if we can identify the owner of the bag, we take the bag off the flight. So <laughs> A11, um, could you identify yourself? And if you're unable to do that, for whatever reason there is, we ask you to. They're going to take you off the platform decently. Okay. But I'm not kicking you off. All okay, right, so they just identified all, yourself. They just, oh, the person has identified himself. All right, so back to my, my question. So I gather that of the 18 or 20 of us, um, we have 18 of us on the platform. We have a, a combination of managers oh, and uh, directors. Somebody okay, speaking again, you. somebody thank speaking. You. All right, um, so we, are we ready now? Uh, Miss, Miss, Miss Hall, are we ready now? Getting some disturbance there. All right. Yeah, just, I just want to get an, an idea of, uh, you, you don't have to tell me your name. I, I'm seeing the names on the platform, but um, in terms, you're decision makers for the most part. You're, you're leading, you're people who lead teams. You lead teams? Yes. yes. Yes, you lead teams. You have four and five people reporting to you. Or three people reporting. Anybody here with a span of control of over 10 or 12 or five or six, anybody? Yes, over 10. Okay. All right, fine. All right. So for the most part, they're in customer service organizations, Cust yes. customer service and customer support organizations. Yeah. All right. So we are, and we, we have 
many customers and no doubt your business depends on customer support and customer service okay yeah so all right i hear one yes 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 and i hope the yes carries for everyone um from my my background uh, my you will have seen my profile i've worked in the customer service environment for many years i've worked in beverage i've worked in um retail trade at one point i was personal officer for a whole supermarket chain an hr manager for beverage um i've worked in tobacco i sell cigarettes yes um i worked in telecoms yeah um i think i've had a, a range of experience across many different customer segments which have added to um the the learnings i've had in terms of how you care for and provide for and support customer. All right, so that's the that's my context. Really. So we'll move on. Um, a, a thought for today. So I gave you my story. I gave you context. I gave you a thought for today that many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. But the, you're not the type of person to give up easily. Agenda, we welcomed you already. I'm gonna give you a little icebreaker shortly. And then I'm gonna ask you, why are, why are you here? Why have you come? I think Miss Hall was asking that question earlier. And to just look at, I heard you speaking about your expectations. And then we're going to just talk about you and your context and then take a break. And then hopefully by we get to 12 o'clock, we will have set a proper framework. All right, so icebreakers, look at this diagram. If you can, look at this piece of artwork and tell me how many persons you can see. I see four so far. You see four so far, yeah. It means that you have Alzheimer's. Anyway, but go ahead. <laughs> go, go ahead. We're, we're testing your 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 shot, your brain sharpness. Look again. Look how many? I've seen six. You've seen six. Mm -hmm. Somebody says four. Somebody says six. How many? You see how many? Anybody seeing more than six? Five. Is it five? <laughs> All right. Is oh, that's right. Kim don't need to hear me. <laughs> Look, if it's because somebody top your thing already, somebody said six, you know, so you have to be saying more than six now. Somebody saw seven. five. Seven. Somebody, seven. somebody says seven. Okay, good. good. Somebody seeing seven. Right? Anybody saying more than seven? Anybody seeing more than seven? Yeah, ten. You're seeing the ten? Whoa. Well, um, anybody seen 10? Who says I see 10? I see five now. Who said I see 10? Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Who said I see 10? Eh? Tomorrow, so 10. Somebody said, I didn't get the name. Is it Andre? 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 Or Michelle? Omar Blackwood. Omar Blackwood. You saw 10? Yes, sir. Good. I'm seeing 10 also. 10. All right. So if at this hour of the morning you can see 10, it means that your brain works as an active clock. If you see less than 10, it means that you're teetering on the possibility of Alzheimer's. <laughs> I don't really mean that, but look, if you look, look, though, okay, if you're okay. seeing, try and, and see the 10. Look again carefully. I have found nine. Look again. There must be a 10th there. I would like everyone to at least try and see 10. Come again, look again, man. Let's see if you can see 10. It's only five there, you know? <laughs> you sure? <There's> no... <laughs> then it's five me, so it must be five. <laughs> no, there, it's more than five. <laughs> uh, it's more than five. I don't see where the 10 comes from. Hey. I'm only seeing five as well. <laughs> By the way, without glasses, I saw four, and with glasses, I saw five. Whoa, no, but it's not a, it's not, it's not a glass thing more, more than saying how your brain can process and pick up because somebody see, somebody's seeing 10. So it's like a tree, look on both sides of the, of the, the, the vine the, there. Vine there. Okay. All right, it's actually 10. Let's take a moment again and look. I'm just on Look to the look to look on both sides. Put yourself to the test and look again. Some of the some of the heads, some of the persons are 
face down, some are face up, some are overlapping. Yes, I'm seeing 10 now. <laughs> All right, so somebody has seen 10. The person who says, him say five, so it must be five. Look again, my brother. <laughs> five, still five. Whoa. All right, so we won't be able to detain her long, longer to look more than that. So, um, okay. But it's actually 10. All right, so we're going to move on. What, what I did so, was take a picture of it. So I will, you know, in my spare time, look a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, catch up with everybody, yeah. But All it's right, clear fine. example. Everybody's brain don't work the same speed, you know? Yeah, uh, maybe at this time of the morning, maybe after you have lunch, you would have had lunch, it might, it might, it might, you know, begin to. Um, or, or maybe I have Alzheimer's. <laughs> no, I wouldn't quite say, you know. Um, um, all right. Um, so um, it's, it's just that sometimes oh, we, we are not so sharp at some, some points in our day, but we'll get there. All right. But this is a, an exercise to get us, get us going and get the brain going. And I want you to be sharp and focused and with me this morning because I'm going to give you some thoughts and hopefully you can take some notes um, as we go along. So let's continue. We're moving on. So this morning we're talking about customer service. And I started off with my personal experience because I've had a lot of experience, formally and informally, about um, seeking out and taking care of the customer. <sighs> My, my work has been in organizations where you have to sell either product or service to survive. And so you depend on the customer. So the themes we're looking at this morning, creating a customer service philosophy for your team, creating a customer service philosophy for your team, the customer service philosophy, the customer service philosophy and team integration, the role of the manager. And I'm really going to strike home hard at this because we can't, be talking about creating a, a philosophy with our teams outside of ourselves as managers. I think somebody had a hand up. Nicole, was it Nicole no, who had Dr. a hand Dr. Sterling? Yes, yeah, go ahead. One second, please. Was, um, one could you zoom up the information a little bit more or something? Can We can barely see it. You're not seeing it? Um, not seeing it. Um, you're not seeing my slide. We're seeing the slides, but the information is a bit small. Oh, so yes, yeah, information is small. Up. All right, I'm gonna. Uh, you can see better now. I zoom it in a little bit. Can you yes. see? Yes. Carry, right. carry it back out a little. Okay, take it back out a little. Yeah. Uh, just a minute there. Oh, oh, I gone back. All right, well, just oh, a minute. Um, yeah, yeah. I just trying to. Wow, wow, wow. All right, let me just zoom again. All right, that's better. Yes. Colleagues, right, is sorry. that better for you? And I like your question because guess what now? We are here trying to offer customer service. So we want to make sure our, our hearers and our viewers can see and experience the best of what we're offering. It keeps going back, yes. I think that's it's, it's better now. Bring, bring right. yeah, this one a little better. bit more. That's better? Yeah, but we could bring it up a little bit more. What do you mean bring it up a little bit more? You zoom it in a little bit more. All right, let me try that. Well, uh, let me go again. I, I seem to have missed one minute there. We're going to make sure we do this well for you guys. All right, so zoom a little bit more. You can see it now? No, part it's, of it it's is... Gone. It's gone yeah. too much now. All right, let's 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 try again. No, best you can bring it in so they can see it. Um, maybe All right, the fine. want to take right. pictures of the, the information. All right, so that's it. All right, you can see, if you can see it there, we can progress. That's good? Well, colleagues... All right, I have to zoom each time because um, so I'm going to zoom each time to make sure everybody has it. Okay, all right. Can you all see it? Is it good? Yes, yes sir. All right, okay. All right, so sorry, don't sorry, we won't be sir. detained by anyone. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, sir. Yes, sorry. no problem. Go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. Um, before mm -hmm. you move on, will these slides be sent to the participants? I or don't know. No. Um, HR concepts will need to tell us <laughs> that. I'm just sharing them with you. And uh, they are going to okay. be working slides. I won't be able to send them now. But um, the HR, I'll leave it to HR concepts to decide between there and us. All right. Okay. All right. But all you right, won't okay. be missing anything. Just take some notes. I'll take a picture if you may. And then I I'll charge it to copyright around it. So, yes, guys, we're going to be okay. looking at the customer service philosophy. But we can't, we, we can't come here and give a lecture 
about customer service before starting with matters, okay? So that's first part of our theme. The second part of our theme um, looks at customer service and critical thinking, the role of team members, building the critical thinking skills among team members, techniques of customer support and importance of observing, listening and analyzing. Now, this drives home at the heart of where the manager needs to enable, create the enabling, because we can't expect team members to just become critical thinkers or to develop skills in customer service or to develop techniques for customer support or to and, and be enabled to identify the importance of observing and listening and analyzing without an enabling being created by the manager or the team leader or the person who makes the decision. We can't achieve any of that. So yes, it's a theme, but we're going to look at this in the context of the role of the manager. So I'm setting the foundation for us to pick up on this later. Um, again, developing, improving customer service standards. Hopefully by the end of today, we can get to a point on this. Why? Why a customer service standard? Why do we align team performance standards to customer expectations? And why do we establish customer service goals? And if I look at these three themes, I wonder who informed the lady at the Canadian Embassy? The security guard? Who was her enabler? Who gave her the enabling On the to cross. provide me assistance? But even as she might have got the enabling to provide assistance, to what extent did that enabling um, allow her to be genuine about the customer service given? Because as, as I said in my opening statements, she gave good customer service, but then she expected something in return, which suggests to me that the behavior was not born out of an enabling that meant the customer comes first, but it was more about something that I could get out of being nice to a gentleman in a nice car um, needing help at the time. But who is it that enabled the other security guard and the ancillary worker? Did somebody really tell them that they ought to take care of this parent and this child the way that they did? By uh, not smelling over, 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 but giving um, undiluted um, customer support in a moment that was needed without looking for anything. And I'm sure that many persons listening, myself included, having listened, having had the experience, would have wanted our customer service people to treat with our customers in the same way that would allow them to want to come back to do business. Yeah. So that's where my theme is. Um, somebody has a mic open where children are playing. Could you silence your mic, please? It's really disturbing the, the presentation. Could somebody just, wherever the children are, just, we'd love children, we want to keep them quiet for the time being. All right, so that's the context. I'll be continuing. So this morning's objectives, I would like to, explore with us, and I don't want to rush either, the dimensions of what we're going to be looking at as a customer service philosophy among individuals and teams, because it's not only for the one person. When we begin to focus on individual, we will be able to um, broaden our focus to teams ultimately. We want to help your participants, all of you, to build your self-awareness of your role and the impact on the organization. We want to help you to identify and discuss the dynamics of your of individual and team engagement. Because if people are going to be, if we are creating an environment of success where people are going to be good purveyors of customer service, then there must be an enabling which comes out of team engagement. Uh, something I pride myself in because that's how I've worked with teams over the many years. And true focus on customer service philosophy, explore approaches to build accountability, to build commitment, and then drive for results. Because you know, we do customer service because we want to serve others so that they can come back to continue doing business with us. Clear? All right, any questions so far? Is it clear so far to you guys? Are you seeing this slide? Can you see this slide? It's okay. 
Yes, sir. Yes, you sir. can see. All right, fine. Yes, sir. And is are my thoughts clear to this point? Just want to make sure. Don't want to ask you anything. Clear? Yes, it is. Yes. Yes, right, sir. Right. Let's continue. So I'm setting my framework before we get into where it really matters. So the content, I won't, I won't detain you much on this, but role of the team leader, supervisor, what leaders and managers do, become a manager, communication, self-awareness, self-management, management style. All of these matter in terms of being able to get your teams ready for customer service, your effectiveness in all of that. So I would like you to go back to your training. I don't know what level of detail is involved in the level of training, but at some point or other, you would have had training in management and you would have had some training in managing people. Um, I find in my experience that we have many managers who are functionally capable. So they're very strong at accounts, very strong at HR, very strong at quality assurance and so forth, very strong in marketing. Many managers are very strong functionally, but they need support when it comes to the people enabling. And if our content of our workshop is asking us to create customer service success, it means that it requires um, a, a greater dimension in how we lead and engage our teams towards an outcome that's ultimately going to be for the benefit of us all. Building trust, all of that is important. So manager and team. So what are some of the things you have you've been doing managers? What are some of the things you have been in, engaged in? You have been managing workflow, true? Hmm? You have been managing the workflow? Of course, I think, yes. right? You have been training new hires and your teams generally, aren't you? When people come on board, you train them. You give them the yeah. enabling to, to do what is to be done well, correct? Okay, you, cre you create and you manage team schedules. Right, I, I, have, I have a typographical. You manage team schedules, so you manage how people move, how people work, when they come, when they go, what they do. Don't you? Of course you do. That's part of your job description. You report to HR and senior management on issues that affect your team. Correct. So you'll say to HR, hire two more people, or you'll say to HR, this person's this person's not performing well, so we need to terminate them. Is that true? <laughs> more when you go to HR, most times. Isn't this what you, you ask Asia to do? Terminate this one or suspend this one or discipline this one. Do you go to HR to engage training and support more than disciplinary matters, anybody? Which one takes more of your time? Hello? Anybody here go to HR for help, for support? Anybody? Sandra, you go to HR for any support? Not necessarily, because based <laughs> on how things are, I yes. heard you, Dr. Sterling, spoke earlier about, you know, when you encounter certain things, you might tell them who to let go. But in terms of my style, because yes. I know how economically the country is and things yes. are persons, I always seek to have dialogue with the individual first to find okay. out what is it that is happening? Why are you lagging? Why are you not doing what you ought to do? The last resort now in terms of the owner of yes. the businesses or anything, then, you know, I go and have dialogue within that regard. But most times, I would normally try to find out what's the root cause of the individual not performing the way he or she should. And that in itself, like going to say, well, we need to maybe tell this person to take a step out. That would be the last resort for me, to be honest. But I try to see how best we can resolve issues and performance, you know, as it relates to the worker, him or herself. That's the last thing, to be honest, I would yeah. do. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I, I like that, um, Sandra, because that's the essence of engagement. When the team has an issue and you are going to seek about some kind of improvement, you speak to the person, you dialogue with them to find out what is the 
the real issue and seek to find some kind of solution. That's very good. And this is our context. So we can't speak about building a customer service philosophy and engaging our team to be successful until we are able to engage the way you have just described in enabling our team. So among the things that we have to do, one of the most important is to engage and create the enabling for our, team, our teams. What about evaluating performance and providing feedback? Anybody here has done that or is doing that now? Speaking to people about their performance and evaluating their feedback, providing feedback to them. Anybody here on this platform? I want to hear some more people speaking. So I heard from Sandra and I'm seeing C Anderson. I, I don't want your first name. Miss Anderson or Mr. Anderson, are you involved in your team, you know, providing Ms. Anderson. feedback? Miss Anderson. Yes, ma'am. Are you involved? Um, like, not at the management level as yet, mm -hmm. but as I'm yet. getting there as yet. Yeah, but okay. But have you been in, 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 involved in any conversations about your performance with your manager and yes, receiving I have. feedback? Yeah. Yes, I okay. have. All right. How do you find the conversation uplifting or and rewarding or what? How do you find that? Uplifting, rewarding, and give me some pointers as to how I can better my performance. Yes, yeah, so, definitely. You know, Definitely. Everything you take with a, well, you, you take suggestion mm -hmm. and um, improve Definitely. where you can. All right, fine. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else has had this kind of engaging based on your manager responsibility, talking to your team and providing feedback on performance? Anybody? Because, guys, this is a question I ask when people come to me and say, take this action, take this disciplinary action. And I go back and I ask them the same thing that Sandra mentioned. Yes, earlier. And they will say, no, I didn't. Then we have to start over to go through the process of the, of the enabling. Um, anybody else, just one more, um, um, one more uh, volunteer, just to say, if you've had this experience or you're actually doing that now, evaluating your team's performance and providing feedback. Anybody else? Yes. Ms. Tell me, quick, who is, this? who is this speaking? Jay Williams. Ms. Williams. Yes, go ahead, Ms. Williams. We are... We do have feedback one-on-one um, -on -one with the employees mm -hmm. so that we can get their feedback as well, not just give feedback on their performance, but get mm -hmm. feedback from, from them as to what's happening in their sectors and how they deal with it and how we as a company can mm -hmm. better offer good service to our customers. Right. And, and that's so that cost... Uh, thank you very much. And that customer, customer conversation as part of the engagement is important. We're going to explore that a little bit more later. Christina, you want to speak um, on any experience you've had in speaking to your team and enabling them to do you know, the job they do? I'm just speaking on you, Christina. I just see your nice name. And you, my, my daughter is also Christina, so I'm just speaking on you. You want to speak to us? Christina? Oh, Christina not talking to us at all. Tanisha, you want to give a thought on your experience here? Tanisha not talking to us either. Janice? Hi, good morning. Good morning. Thank uh, you for talking to us, Janice. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, um, actually in the process right now, um, mm -hmm. with three associates that have been out live for three weeks, mm -hmm. um, what I've done is that I'm a type of manager that does not like sit around my desk. I normally walk around um, to each individual, you know, yeah. find out yeah. what's happening, what are the errors yeah. that they're getting. So that gives me um, a better understanding and how and what is their weakness. So mm -hmm. during our one-on-one -on -one coaching session, I was like, say, all right, this is what we need to work on this week do not mm -hmm. focus on the handy time you're going to focus for example you're getting errors on merchant that is what we're Merch going to work yeah. together yeah yeah so that yeah. is what we're going to work together and see what's the result by the ending of the week i'll also create trackers like to make their yeah. work easier it's like with different merchants that we normally see like every day so actually provide them with tools to help them you know to improve so each week I'll meet with them and mm -hmm. I'll say, hey, you did actually meet the target for this week. So we're going to use the same right. style that we used last mm -hmm. week to, um, mm -hmm. to study your performance because I need to see consistency. Right. So it's good for me so far and it's working. Right. 
Excellent. And yes, you're, you're, thank you very much, Janice. Um, I really appreciate your feedback. Because 